Welcome back. It is Wednesday, October 4th, and the MLB, our three favorite picks are on the way. It's Austin, joined by Logan today, joined by a special guest, and I believe you know who it is. Get it out. The broom is here. A 3-0 day to kick off postseason baseball. Let's do a little bit of a victory lap, and then we'll dive into today's picks that we got for Wednesday. Rangers money line. I got to watch that one in person. Great call, Logan, at plus 130. We will take it. The Rangers win that one 4-0. I got to uh, I watched on TV the Diamondbacks Brewers game over four and a half first five. That was a no sweat winner in the third inning. They got it done. Then, Logan, you were in person for the Marlins Phillies under four first five. Sweaty. <laughs> I know he can attest to being sweaty. We needed a nerfy in the fifth inning to get that a winner, but we will take a 3-0 day, and let's try to continue that momentum all postseason long. We're going to be at some games this weekend. Hopefully, we get to see you guys. But we got three picks. We're going to talk about three different games. Let's just dive into the picks. Logan, I'm going to let you lead it off again. Where are you going in this Rays-Rangers game? Yeah, I'm going back to the game you were at yesterday. I hope you had a lot of fun in the trop. You were one of, like, what, 200 fans there? I'm, I'm just kidding. Everyone knows the, the, the poor attendance in the trop. And you know what? If anybody who goes to the game is going to watch their Rays season end today, I'm taking the Rangers on the money line, plus 140 odds on Bet365. Currently your best value there. Now, I think this this is definitely a great great bet to make. You know, I'm back on the Rangers to close it out today. If they win they today, they win the series. Now, if they lose today, though, I will likely be back on them tomorrow. I think the Rangers are just the right side to be on in this series. Look who's starting for the, the Rays today. It's Zach Eflin. 3.3 ERA and a 1.04 whip at home this year. Zach Eflin's been a really good pitcher at home. He was better earlier in the season. I think he, he you know, once hitters started to figure him out, he uh, he started to finally look human. Over his last four starts, Eflin has a 3.68 ERA. So hovering around the four ERA, that's exactly what probably what I expect from, from him today. But he faces a really tough Rangers lineup, the Rangers. Third best in batting average and third best in OPS versus righties this, this season. There's a reason why the Texas Rangers have, have the record they do. It's not really their pitching. It's been their offense. And I think, once again, they can get uh, to Zach Eflin today. Not a ton of their hitters have played appearances versus Zach Eflin, but one guy that does, Corey Seager, 3 for 7, hitting 429 versus Zach Eflin. Got to point that out. Because if Corey Seager's living on base, hopefully the, the hitters around him can, can also do some damage. Yes, yesterday, the Rays errors helped Texas win that game. There's no denying that. You know, Tampa Bay really uh, came out deer in headlights, played terribly. But there were a ton of base runners for, for Texas yesterday. The Rangers went 2 for 13 with runners, runners in scoring position, 13 left on base yesterday. The fact, the, the fact that the damage, you know, was only four runs, it could have been a lot worse. Yes, the errors contributed to it, but the Rangers' bats... If, if they're better and, you know, more polished today, which, you know, you, you get those first uh, postseason jitters. And that, now they're now that they're settled in, hopefully today they can get some hits and runs up on Zach Eflin because I really do think uh, Zach Eflin is not really a primetime pitcher. I don't think he's ready for this moment. Now on the other side, we've got Nathan Navaldi starting for the Rangers. 3.56 ERA and a 1.16 whip on the road for Avaldi. Now, it's no secret that Evaldi struggled in September. And, you know, when you're watching this game, the broadcast will probably bring it up. In his last four starts, Evaldi has a 9.18 ERA. Not what we're looking for today, uh, Nathan Evaldi. But two of those games were to the Seattle Mariners. And the Mariners had his number. Sometimes in those divisional games, you just face an opponent that just you know has your number. And that's what Seattle had in, his, in two of those uh, last four starts. The question is, can he be good against Tampa Bay today? Because that's who he's playing. And the Rays are only hitting 178 against Savaldi in 80 plate appearances. So I, I really do think he, he actually does match up pretty well versus this Rays lineup. He faced the Rays back in July. He went six innings pitched, zero in run, only two strikeouts, and, and Texas won that, that game 5-3. to three. The two strikeouts is kind of notable because it shows – that even when the strikeout stuff isn't there, he is able to get those Rays to, you know, ground out. And, and that's kind of what we want. We want some ground into double plays because I know for sure whenever I back the Rays, they give me plenty of those. So hopefully Ivaldi, you know, is sharp today and, and can, you know, not go out there and uh, and sell the game for us. I think he'll he'll be pretty solid. I don't think he goes all that deep into this game. At least the, his outline tell, is telling us that. But I think he'll be solid. Now we get to the bullpens. Tampa Bay ninth in bullpen ERA over the last month compared to Texas 24th in bullpen ERA. I you know what? I don't really care about these comparisons. I I think it really does go out the window because yeah, yesterday if you were watching the broadcast, how many times did they say, well the the Rays bullpen is just so much better than the Rangers bullpen? Yeah, it didn't matter because the, the the Rays still couldn't score. And I still think the right side on this one, starting pitching edge, 
goes to goes to Texas. Hitting definitely goes to, to Texas. And I think the offense is going to be the difference in this one. The more trustworthy offense, in my opinion, is the Rangers. And at the plus 140 value that we're getting, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, and ride the Rangers today. I, I And I think it's a really solid bet to make. But Austin, where are you going? Yeah, I mean, I think that really comes down to how Eovaldi pitches. If he pitches well, I think the Rangers got a good chance, and I think he at least gives us a better a better chance than, you know, than I think the Rangers are probably expecting from Dane Dunning in Game 3. So they'll probably play this one like they got to win it, and I think they probably have a good chance. Plus 140, I think is great value. Now I'm going to go to the same one, the same game I talked about yesterday, going back to that Brewers game, and I'm just relying on the Brewers today, taking their team total over 3.5 runs, which is currently minus 125 on Caesars. Don't love taking a ton of juice, but I personally play this to right around minus 140. I think this is a great price i don't hate four and a half but we've seen a lot of teams end with four runs on the dot i mean you think about just yesterday the rangers had four i think the phillies had four so that's going to happen you're going to see a lot of teams at four is that big number and i think this is a key spot to get it in but i don't hate the full game over in this one i just think the brewers are the better offense to back and i could see a lot of people jumping off the brew crew yesterday i talked about hey i don't think corbin burns is in for a great start everyone's going to be on corbin burns expecting the brewers to easily get him up get the win no, they didn't get it done. And now I could expect people to jump ship, see Zach Gallon on the other side and say, yep, screw the Brewers. I'm riding with the D-backs. And I could see the Brewers winning this one and forcing a game three here. But let's talk about Zach Gallon, who's going to go for the Diamondbacks. A 4.42 ERA and a 1.2 whip on the road. It's been no secret. Zach Gallon, when he's at home, dominant when he's on the road hasn't been as good he's allowed 15 home runs on the road compared to just seven at home and you look at his strikeout to walk ratio drops from 6.67 at home to 3.45 so not only is he knocking in those swings and misses he's also walking some guys and he's allowed a 301 batting average on balls and play this season now i put that out there because it's the Brewers team that really doesn't strike out a ton. They will strike out here and there. They will. But this is a team that likes to work at bats. This is one a team that averaged nearly the most pl pitches seen per plate appearance. They're going to foul off some pitches. And if you can put some in play, you've seen success against Gallon. And look, Gallon is good. I'm not going to say he's trash. He's not bad. He's one of the better pitchers the league has the offer. But he does have some weakness weaknesses. Let's talk about him. Gallon, 33rd percentile on expected batting average, 27th in barrel percentage, and 5th in hard hit percentage. So he gives up hard contact. Contact. And if he's not getting the swings and misses, like I don't expect him to get today, I think the Brewers are going to be able to do some damage, whether that's via some home runs, whether that's via some doubles into the gap, maybe even a triple. This is a team in the Brewers that can be aggressive on the base base paths, does have guys that can steal, and guys that can, you know, maybe stretch a double into a triple. The guys that have that speed, whereas you see guys just hold up at second. Look, this is a Brewers team backs against the wall. They need to win today. They have no other excuse. So they're going to be trying to manufacture some runs, whether that's trying to bunt a guy into scoring position. Either way, they're going to be trying to score those runs because they can't afford to lose this game. So they're going to be trying pulling out all the stops to get those runs. And I think they're going to have a good chance to get it done. And we've seen Gallon two starts versus the Milwaukee Brewers this year. And he's cooked them. Let's talk about it. April 10th, way, way long ago. Seven innings pitched, zero earned runs, 11 Ks. They saw him about two months later on June 21st. Seven innings pitched, only one earned run, but only four Ks. You saw those uh, Ks drop from 11 down to four. Started to see his pitches a little bit better. Just couldn't get those balls in play. I think today they get him in play, and I think they're going to have some good success against Gallon. Look, Gallon, if you look at his earned runs prop, I just told you, he just dominated this team, and now we're in the postseason. His earned runs prop sitting at two and a half, but it's about minus 150, minus 160 on the over. I just don't think they're handing out free money on an earned runs prop at under two and a half this is a diamondbacks team that also used six relievers yesterday including their three best guys so i think that the diamondbacks with probably merrill kelly scheduled to go tomorrow i wouldn't be surprised if maybe they get down in this one maybe they're down you know 3-0 after gallon comes out and they're like you know we can't use our best guys best relievers here let's put in our worst guys see the brewers maybe get a couple runs on that bullpen too but we could also see them maybe get two up on gallon two on the bullpen i really like the brewers today i think they win this game but i don't think they're winning it unless they score at least four runs so i really like the brewers team total i think their bats show up yesterday if you took their team total like this you got wrecked as they scored three runs in the first two innings and had nothing after that in fact they had bases loaded with zero out so that just goes to show you i think this offense is due i think they're coming in here with what they're going to try to manufacture some runs and i really do like the brewers team total over three and a half runs as my favorite pick of the day now for our third and final pick we're gonna go to the mets or not the mets the mets are no nowhere near the postseason we're going to marlins in the phillies game and we're going to talk about this one logan and i are going to tackle it together i'll talk about one half i'll talk about the second half we're taking the over four and a half runs in the first five innings now right now you're seeing a bunch of different books with differing value you should if you are on any book please get plus value i don't see this line being at you know minus value unless you're on FanDuel. almost every book is at plus value but Let's talk with the over and why we're taking it. Because yesterday, if you recall, 
top of the show, we talked about the under, where we took yesterday. Today, I think the over is the better spot to be on. And I'll talk about Aaron Nola. Logan will talk about the Marlins pitcher. Let's talk about Aaron Nola, though. He's going to start for the Phillies. 4.46 ERA and 1.15 whip. His three starts versus Miami this year, 4-4 four, four, and 4 earned runs, allowing five home runs total, at least one home run allowed in, in each start. I think he allowed one, three, and then one home run. So, look, Nola's been better at home. No way around that. He's been better at home. He's not been good on the road. However, two of those three starts against Miami did come at home. So they've had his number. And this is a Marlins team, just like the Brewers who we talked about. Backs against the wall. they got to manufacture some offense. I think they're going to do it today. I think they have plenty of bats to get it done. Yesterday, we're at two for seven with runners in scoring position. Did not get anything up on Wheeler. But I think Nola, they have better splits against. If we could get another four on runs out of Nola, I'd feel pretty dang good about cash this one. But you look at Nola. You look at the batters against him. You see Solaire, 313. You see uh, Josh Bell, only 185. But he's been really good for the Marlins. Sneakily good for him. And he has two home runs in those uh, in that 185 average in like 29 plate appearances. De La Cruz, 308. John Birdie, 308. You got uh, Arise, 333. Wendell, 3, 250. Jake Berger's one for one for two. Like after Wheeler dominated yesterday, maybe they come up with a different approach against Nola. But I think they're going to put the ball in play and have good chances against the Phillies. And look, I'm going to call out two guys that the Marlins need desperately. Jorge Soler, Jazz Chisholm Jr. You guys need to show up. Yesterday, you didn't. 0 for 8 with 5 Ks combined. You guys came up with uh, guys on base and you could not get anything going. We know how talented both those two guys are. Soler hit over 40 home runs. You can easily send one into the bleachers. A very hitter-friendly ballpark. Citizens Bank Park. I like them to get some runs up on Nola. But at Logan, I'll let you tackle the Marlins pitcher. Who's pitching for them today? Yeah, it's going to be Braxton Garrett. He, he's starting for the Marlins today. 2.85 ERA and a 1.04 whip on the road for Braxton Garrett. Those are good numbers, but we got to talk about his matchup today because he has a terrible matchup against the Phillies. Phillies have a 353 batting average and a 374 expected batting average in 73 plate appearances against Braxton Garrett. The fact that they've seen him that many times and they have a, almost a 400 expected batting average. Yeah, we got to take our chances there. You know, if, if the lights are, are pretty bright in, in this game for Braxton Garrett, wouldn't surprise me one bit. In two starts against Philly, he gave up three earned runs and, and five innings pitched in both those games. So that's that's going to help our, our total, our first five total a lot. The, if, if he can, you know, go par for the course in, in what he was doing in the regular season. And the fact yesterday that the Phillies were able to hit Jesus Lazardo means they can real do real damage against lefties. I was obviously at that game and I was like, I was kind of sitting there chewing my nails. I'm like, damn, they weren't supposed to hit Lizardo like this. I was like, ah, the lefties were even hitting Lizardo. And I was like, uh-oh. And and so with that being said, I, I, I definitely think, you know, uh, Braxton Garrett could definitely be, be in for some damage. At home, the Phillies, seventh in runs, ninth in hits. This is a top 10 offense at home. You don't really want to mess with them, especially during the playoff time. Citizens Bank Park is one of the coolest atmospheres uh you know in, in postseason baseball for sure and philly is hitting 262 against lefties at home this season we know we know several of these hitters in the phillies lineup see left-handed pitching really well and at home this is this is where they thrive righties tend to do well against braxton garrett then tend to do better uh, than lefties righties are hitting 261 uh, opponents batting average against Braxton Garrett. So I'm looking at guys like Trey Turner and, and Bohm and Real Muto to do a lot of damage today. We saw Turner, you know, obviously have a multi-hit game yesterday. We saw Bohm get the, the clutch RBIs when, when, when needed. Uh, and then we saw Real Muto still get some hits. These are all guys that, that I'm expecting to do damage. And as long as the lefties in the in the at-bats, you know, the Harpers and, and Stotts, they're still on base. There, there should be a lot of run opportunities in this first five inning. As Austin mentioned, Aaron Nola, for whatever reason this year, he's just not that guy. And, and he can go in and, and change the narrative in the postseason. That's definitely possible. The, the Marlins bats could be poverty, but I don't think they are going to be. Their season's on the line. Like, this is the do-or-die game. If they reach, uh, they'll, they'll be stealing. And, you know, definitely they want to get some runs. And yesterday's game, there could have easily been a lot more runs in the first five innings. We started, the way the Phillies game started, they had runners on second and third, I think uh, either zero or one outs. And they, they didn't they didn't score anything out of that. It, it ended up in a nerfy nation uh, in that one. So there, there should be a lot of run opportunities early in this game. And there's a reason why the total, even though they went under yesterday, the total went up to like eight, eight and a half. There, there's going to be a lot of runs. 
and hopefully they come in the first five innings for us. Yeah, yeah Logan, I 100% agree. Hopefully we can get two or three runs on each starting pitcher, and boom, it's a winner right there. And plus money, plus 114 on DraftKings. We'll take it. It was about minus 110 on FanDuel. Like I said, if you can get plus value, definitely go for it. Value could change throughout the day. But those are our three favorite picks of the day. Let's bring out the broom once again. We'll be back again tomorrow with some more picks. We'll have some. Uh, we'll have our Thursday night football video live later on today, and then our second channel is live on the cha- on the screen if you want to go check that out. Austin Logan signing out. Broom signing out. We'll see you guys back in tomorrow, hopefully with the brooms out. We'll see you then. Peace.